happens to be listening on his way in to speak with Neil, please do not blame Neil for the smell. <laughs> They're going to be looking at each other going, was that you? Was that you? No, Neil. Such a smell. Neil's going to go to the studio door and say to the Prime Minister, I'll give that 15 minutes. Ella Cat, good morning to you. Good morning. To what do we owe the pleasure of? We are surrounded by oh. cheese. Oh, honestly, I don't know what to say right now. Well, we we spoke last week about Brandy Creek Wines in Druin, and we had a call, I think, from Ken, who said uh, it's not the only uh, gastronomic uh, feast down at, at Druin or in West Gippsland. He pointed out that Jindy Cheeses is also based down there, and they've done very, very well recently in international circles, and that we should check them out. So they've checked us out. They've checked us out. We're surrounded by cheese. We welcome uh, Danny Gluck from Menorah Foods. You own Jindy Cheeses? Yes, our company does own, yes. Lead a bit forward, uh, Danny. Tell us about the award that you won. Well, it was at the International uh, uh, Cheese Competition of the Fine Food Guild, Guild of Fine Foods, um, very prestigious award, international acclaim, and fortuitously, uh, Jindy Brie, our flagship Brie, came out. They were the only one that won a gold award, followed closely by our Blue, which won one gold, and our Washed Rind, which is the Rustic Brie, won on two, two occasions one gold. And you say you're unique because you're Australian owned? Absolutely. We are the largest boutique Australian white mould and blue mould cheese factory still remaining in Australia. Right, and your uh, cheesemaker, blessed are the cheesemakers, <laughs> is uh, Frank Bahrain. Good morning, Frank. Good morning. Uh, are you French? Yes. <laughs> and congratulations. Yeah, it was uh, good for us to, uh, to beat the French brie, and uh, the French brie with uh, unpasteurized milk got bronze, and us with uh, pasteurized milk, we got gold. And did you ever think that you would end up being a cheesemaker in Australia? Uh, yes, because at first I, I work in a French company in Australia, so right, okay. it has been the, the link. Now, you, you said that this is made with unpasteurized milk, and that the French is made, sorry, the French is made with unpasteurized milk. Are we commanded by law in Australia to use pasteurized milk? Yes, it's correct. For the soft cheese, we have to make uh, cheese with pasteurized milk. Yeah, and is, is that a disadvantage to you? But to me now, after a, a lot of years, I don't believe so. Uh, I think we have uh, everything uh, to make the best quality and uh, we can use the same cultures than raw milk. And but we make the same cheese. And if you had a choice between using either, would, would you have a preference? Uh, I've been trained with uh, the big company in France and they use pasteurized milk, so I, I am more for the, the pasteurized milk uh, process. Okay. The, it is one of the most glorious foodstuffs in the world. I mean, there are t you either like cheese or you don't. I, mean, I assume there are people listening who don't like cheese. I could eat cheese all day, every day. Me too. It's one of my weaknesses. Whenever we go down to the farm, and we go down at least twice a month, mm. we have a cheese grading after we have an executive meeting. And let me tell you, the opportunity to eat some of the world-class cheeses is beyond your imagination. And we sit there and we glutton ourselves. It is amazing. The Atkins diet uh, says that uh, what you must avoid is carbohydrates. There are, of course, no carbohydrates in cheese. Is there a massive statue to Dr. Atkins out the front of the Na International Cheese <laughs> Institute? He must have been the best thing ever to happen. I, I think it's more the case that we have to look on the positive side, is it half full or half empty? Yeah. And, and we do advocate that our cheese does have a up to 40% fat-free content. Yeah, that's yeah. the way to do that's it. That's the way mm. to do it. Yeah. Now, starting with Ella Carp, what is your favourite, and going round the table, what's your favourite cheese? Oh, look, I love blue. I love a blue, and I, I like a strong blue. I don't. Well, I know you're <laughs> pointing at it right now. Okay, sure. I'll I'm, I'm with Ella Carp. I love a really stinking... Dirty blue. Well, yeah, well, I wouldn't say stinking dirty, but very fine. Is very that reserved mature. blue? That's reserved blue. Yes. Reserved blue. Thank you very much, Frank. I'll have a little bit I think of I'm that. I'm slurping into the microphone. Mm. <laughs> oh, my favourite's the washed rind, which is here on my right. Um, that's the one that's going to have Kevin Rudd and Neil Mitchell looking yeah. at each other saying, was that you? This is the one <laughs> that uh, Danny said uh, is like that uh, fruit durian. It uh, tastes like heaven, smells like hell. Now, you've had a sniff of it, mm. and I've to I told you last week, remember, that uh, that's what your son's feet will smell like when they reach puberty. <laughs> uh, Frank, what's your favourite cheese? Uh, myself, I like the blue cheese. The blue cheese uh, yeah. are very good in, uh, in France, and uh, we try to do the same at uh, Jindy, with the next blue and a uh, reserve blue. At a dinner in the, the dinner table in France, is it more likely that the man is going to like the blue cheese and that the woman is going to like the softer uh, brie? Uh, maybe, maybe, but now the, the younger uh, people in France, they like milder cheese, and in Australia, we are more adventurous, so uh, I can say now the, the quality is about the same uh, in France and in, in, in Australia. It's amazing, after 20 years, 
uh, it has changed here. Danny, your favourite cheese? Well, I have to say I'm partial, very partial to blue and brie, and what uh, Frank has concocted for it in, in the last uh, four months was a blue brie, which is actually a combination of brie with a sandwich of blue in between. And the, the blue, the reserve blue, and the brie... Does it mean this chap that, here? That's the yeah. chap there. And when, when those two cheeses... Everyone else can notice I picked it up in my own hand, which means it's <laughs> unsafe for you to consume. So those two cheeses, when they develop together and mature, the two flavours mature and amalgamate, it is just fantastic. Tough to make a living, living in the cheese industry? At the moment it is difficult. It is very, very competitive out there. I mean, we've got some uh, very large competitors who are controlling the market space and we're trying to be uh, innovative. We're trying to bring out new and different type cheeses. Um, and I'd have to say it is competitive, it is hard, but we're getting there. The accolades will help because that'll give us recognition. And thanks to people like yourselves who invite us in and, and help. Uh, well, so Australian owned in the face of so much non-Australian owned. Jindy spelled J-I-N-D-I. Correct. Where can people uh, find it? No doubt a website. Yeah. Wajindi has a website, yes, it is available nationally through Coles supermarkets, yeah. available in Woolworth stores and uh, fine independent supermarkets. Well, that's the good news, Coles and Woolies, uh, you can find your Jindi cheeses. Absolutely. Hang around and see what the Prime Minister makes over the, uh, this magnificent smell. Neil Mitchell's, Neil, Neil's embarrassed. Uh, Danny uh, Gluck, Frank Bahrain, thank you so much and congratulations with uh, this beautiful Jindi cheese. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank 24 after.